So, uh, you know, I'm just anxious to see how that's going to look. And imagine how Rose and when he used to battle against the Heat with the Bulls versus yeah. LeBron and uh, Wade and now all of them are teammates now. Yeah, that's true. So you got MVPs. You got the Rose is a, a league MVP. LeBron is, what, a three or four times? Um, probably, probably more than that. Yeah, I'm not MVP. sure. MVP. I know Dwayne's a... Wade's a three-time NBA champion. You got LeBron's a three-time NBA champion. Uh, so... A lot of experience on that team. Four time. Four time. Who, four LeBron? time. Yeah. He's not four time. He's not four. No. Really? Three. Hold on. Two in Miami. He's three and five in the finals. That's a, so you that's got, a, want me to count that's out an ugly stat. No, that's right. You're right because yeah. they because he only saw the Warriors three times. Well, the past two, three years. He won two with the uh, with the Heat. I know with that. The Heat and one with Cleveland. Lost the Golden State twice. So in his finals losses have been to the Spurs when he got swept. Mavericks. The first year Mavericks, Spurs, Warriors, Warriors. Wow. Yep. That's pretty embarrassing. So three and five, but you don't need to go with them. So that's what they say. It's like Roman Reigns. Um, yeah, in a way, yeah. It is kind of like Roman Reigns. Like, <laughs> we, we, like LeBron, you're the greatest, man. Yeah, you got to lose a record in the finals over two years. Like, he's the greatest pure athlete I've ever seen. Though. Oh, definitely. I mean, hands the down. The greatest pure athlete I've ever seen. Like, I give him that every day of it's the week. Not the GOAT, but he's definitely yeah, one he's of the greatest one, athletes. He's regarded as one of the greatest. Yeah. One of the greatest but, athletes. I mean, you know, I'm just anxious to see how all this is going to look. Definitely. In live time and real time. Once yeah, once the season games. kicks off. Because honestly, man, it's really a new season. It's almost like it's a new NBA with all but these changes, man. Yeah, it is. It's only like a, a handful of teams that you know that could possibly be there. Right. And I remember a time in the NBA where you could, couldn't even predict who was going to go to the playoffs or who yeah, was going to win the championship. True. That's like, true. It was just like, oh, anybody could emerge. Because you had balance. Yeah. Both conferences, but you did. now it's just like it's lopsided to the Western Conference. In the East, you got Boston, Cleveland, and everybody else, and in the West, you got a full stacked, yeah, you know, Spurs, that's true. That's true. Rockets, Golden State, OKC, and yeah. a lot of people don't feel it, but Minnesota. You know, I think they ain't gonna do any you no know, great thing, but they're gonna they're not gonna be a pushover team like they were before. Okay. They're I can see that some teams, some battles. Yeah. You know? that's, so that's not gonna be an easy win on the schedule anymore. Right. So So just to just to add on to what's been going on in the off season. I don't know all of them, but I try to just think of all the ones that's been going on off the top of my head that I can remember. Chris Paul, it really started off with Chris Paul going to Houston. So now it's that dynamic with him and James Harden. Like you said, Derrick Rose going to the Cavs. Uh, Paul George to OKC. Jimmy Butler going to the Timberwolves. Mm -hmm. DeMarcus Cousins going to the Kings. Gordon Hayward was the first to make that move to Boston the first time. You said Cousins went to the Kings? Cousins went to the Kings. Did he leave the Kings? No, he 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 left. He was from from Memphis. He went to the Kings. You talking about... Zach Randolph. Oh, that's yeah, what I meant. Yeah, Zach yeah, Randolph. Yeah, I'm about to say Demarcus Cousins. Yeah, Demarcus was with the Kings. My bad. That's my fault. Yeah, I've yeah, been yeah, messing. Zach, you talking about Zebo? Yeah, my yeah. boy Zebo. Yeah, Zebo went to the Kings. That's why it hurt me so bad because mm-hmm. I knew he came from Memphis. Gotcha. Um, but then one of the biggest ones that we you know got on last week was Kyrie going yeah. to Boston in exchange for Isaiah Thomas going to the Cavaliers. So. That's one of going to be one of the greatest things, but like you said, it still solidifies Boston and Cleveland as the top two so, in the East. Question for you: Okay, which was the biggest move Whew. of the offseason? You've seen some big ones. The biggest move? I'm gonna go with I was I was listening to Max Kellerman and uh, Stephen A. Smith talk about it on first take. I think the biggest move is Carmelo to OKC. And I say that because that was the person they need. Somebody they needed that a third person, yeah, third score. yeah. Because they've had two dominant scores there before, right? KD and they needed that. Now out. I will say the second one would be right behind it would be Kyrie to Boston. But I mean, the only reason I say that being second is because I mean Isaiah Thomas was still a dominant person. He, I mean, 
even though we say Kyrie is one of the best, I mean, we can't sit here and act like Isaiah wasn't still in that top five, like around that level. Mm -hmm. So he just had to be more consistent. So for Kyrie to go, it's definitely made Boston a better team, um, especially with Gordon Hayward. But yeah, Carmelo was needed in OKC. Even with Paul George, I feel like, you know, just to make somebody like, I feel like this can be a super team. This is going to possibly develop into a super team, even though Carmelo has been in the league for a while now. And I think a lot, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, go ahead. But I think a lot of this now, you know how they used to build teams to win, like just you add on and you build. A lot of these things are happening the way it is now because they want to win now. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a one or two or three year project. No, we want to win. We want to get it now. Now. If this don't work, you're going somewhere else. We want to win now. That's what it is. As opposed to methodically drafting and testing free agency, pulling in good talent here and there. It's now breaking the bank because we want to win now. Hey, some teams that have been doing that, though, actually growing in the process is the Milwaukee Bucks. Mm Mm-hmm. And, which they haven't proven themselves, but I feel like they're growing their nucleus really well, mm-hmm. is um, 76ers. Yep. They've always had the first pick over the last one. <laughs> exactly. And a lot of times they've had a lot of injuries, too. To yeah, the definitely. guys that they've drafted. So. Um, so I'm just anxious to see how all that's going to turn out. I just feel like, I don't know if it's good for the league to have all these superstars on one team. You know, it's not a lot of good balance in the league anymore. No. So you have uh, your seven or eight or nine teams that you know that's going to be contenders and then everybody else pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, Imagine the All-Star game, the Western Conference All-Star. Oh, my gosh. I mean, you got Curry, Clay. It's a mismatch. (laughs) You know, Harden, Chris Paul, Nello. Westbrook and Kyrie's, Kyrie's going to trade to the West at the All-Star game. She's <laughs> so going to be like, like the, the West should run with that. Definitely. So, all right. Here's the last question before we end this. Um, do you feel any hope in L.A. Lakers? Lakers? Yeah. I think they're going to do some good things. I don't think it's going to be an immediate thing where they are just immediately successful. They still have some growing pains they have to go through. I like Ball, the energy he's bringing there. They already have some good young talent there. The energy is that spring. I just want Daddy to be quiet sometimes and let his son enjoy his family. Hey, d- let me tell you. Now, we know this whole thing with, Le- with Lonzo, LeVar Ball has just really started over the past few months. Mm-hmm. You know they have LeVar Ball on 2K? Really? Really, like when you when I'm doing my my, I just have it happened the last time I was playing my 2K mm-hmm. doing my my player. I got a text from Lavar Ball talking about the whole baller brand, big ball, and all this stuff. So my response was to either be like, "Come on, man," or like, "No, who is this really? <laughs> like, who are you? like who are you or something?" But I, it's just it blows my mind just to show how much of an impact Lavar Ball has had, so much so that it's pushed him into the game. He's clouding and, his sons. And the son hasn't even played a game yet, and they're in. His dad is on 2K before his son plays a game. Wow, that just blows my That's mind. Crazy man, <laughs> that is crazy for sure. Um, so I guess we're just getting closer to the NBA season. Preseason should be starting up in October. Yep. Uh, we get ready to see who's going to try to take down the Golden mighty state. The mighty That's Golden what it's state. All for let's join forces and. Take them out. We can take them out, pretty much. And me being a true fresh Warriors fan, I'm, I'm happy to see another defense defending title. Yeah, I wouldn't mind <laughs> Which another one. I joke about. I, I had to joke about that because people are upset with me because since I was born, I was uh, well. Once I started watching basketball, I was a Phoenix Suns fan solely for the fact that Steve Nash was my favorite player. Mm-hmm. Um, so I decided to stay dedicated even when Steve Nash got, you know, left, went to the Lakers for his one, two years. Now, I did follow the Lakers because of Steve Nash, mm-hmm. but I usually said I was a Phoenix Suns fan. Mm-hmm. So since I'm married now, I tried to get my wife into watching sports. And so I did. I wasn't ready to give up L.A., but I was like with NBA, I was like, you know, if you find something you like. I will be whatever fan you want to be of. I, I, I'll submit my old team and we'll be fans of whatever team you like. And we watched the finals game where 
I, I want to say it was game five or something, and the Cleveland Cavaliers was getting a lot of calls in their favor. And my wife just randomly was starting to get upset out of nowhere. She was like, this is fate. LeBron's cheating. And, all. and she was like, you know what? I think I want to be a Warriors fan. And I was like, really? I think I love you even more now. <laughs> so that's funny to me. So, yeah, my friends get upset that I'm a Warriors fan, but I did it for my wife. And, and we're Warriors fans, and you're going to have to deal with it. So with that all being said, we're going to kick out of here. We're going to be going for a quick break, and when we come back, we're finally going to wrap up Sports Moods with giving our NFL predictions for week four. We've gone everywhere. We've been doing the NFL last week, college sports, WWE, MLB, NBA, WNBA. We are Sports Moods. Two Moody's. One Moody's. Sports. We'll be right back. going on guys we are back for our last segment for this week's sports moods i am c moody here with d moody we are sports moods two moody's one duty sports as i said before we have covered everything from last week's nfl college sports the top 10 heisman watch wwe monday night raw smackdown live mlb standings For the upcoming playoff, WNBA Finals, the NBA, all the trades and pickups that's been going on in the offseason. And now we're going to get on NFL Week 4 and we're going to get on our predictions on who we feel is going to take it this week to continue on our race to see who's the better predictor, the guru of sports moods NFL. And right now, for the past couple of weeks, D. Moody has been taking it. Has been taking the weeks, but to end it all, well, so far as far as the season goes, C Moody myself is on top at twenty nine and eighteen, while D Moody is right behind at twenty five and twenty two. So we're gonna go ahead and dive straight into NFL Week Four with Thursday Night Football. That is Chicago Bears one and two versus the Packers, who are two and one. D Moody, who you got? Aaron Rodgers, man. <laughs> going Green Bay on that. Chicago had a good showing against Pittsburgh last week. Uh, these are two divisional opponents, so they do know each other better than most teams. Uh, uh, it's in, I think it's at Lambeau, I want to say. Uh, so I think Green Bay will, will win this game. It's tough coming off a short week. Uh, both of these teams just narrowly escaped with victories last week. So I do give the nod to Aaron Rodgers and the Packers, though. Chicago's got some good young talent with uh, Jordan Howard and uh, Tariq Cohen. Mike Lennon's trying to, you know, you know, find his way as the starting quarterback of that team. But I'm going to go with Green Bay. Mm. As much as I'm nervous and I, for whatever reason I feel like an upset is imminent, I'm, I'm giving it to the Packers as well. It is at Lambeau Field. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and I. It's not too many times you're going to hear me bet against Aaron Rodgers. Just mm-hmm. in general, I'm a major. I'm really big on quarterbacks' presence, um, especially the elite quarterbacks. I mean, you know, there's some decent quarterbacks that I can go either way. But once you start getting to talking about Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, Ben Roethlisberger, you know, you can't really bet too much against them on most occasions. And <clears throat> Matthew Stafford. Um, but um, yeah, so I'm I'm agreeing with you. I'm going with the yeah, Packers. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah I'm, I'm good now. I'm good. So I'm, I agree. We're both going with the Packers for this one. Okay. What's your next game? Next game, I have the L.A. Rams versus the Dallas Cowboys. Early. This one, it's an early game. Oh <sighs> yeah. L.A. Rams, Dallas Cowboys. I like both what the Rams two and did one last week. Both two and one. This is your actually your NFC Championship preview. This is year, right. This is it. So I guess we get to see how 
Yeah. And you know, then and the NFC, I told you, Cal.